Hi everybody, this is Mike Gertis from the Greater Philadelphia Center for Spiritual Living with Wonder Dog Yoga, bringing you another love note. Hey, I got a question for you. What is limiting you living the life that you want to live? Think about it. Now, some of us are gonna come up with some reasons as to why we can't do what it is that we say we wanna do. We might say, well, I'm too old. Or you might say, well, I can't because I'm a man or I'm a woman or because I'm white or I'm black or I don't have enough education or whatever, 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 whatever. The truth is, rarely is there a reason, but there's usually a lot of excuses as to why we're not doing what we want to do. And you know where those excuses are? They're within our own youth of mind. Most of the things that we think we can't do aren't really things at all. They're no things. They're just ideas that we have in consciousness. Now let's say, for example, that you said you had a problem with, oh, let's call it weight. Let's say you happen to be carrying around an extra 30 pounds and you've been carrying around this extra 30 pounds for the last 20 years, always saying you're gonna let it go, but it never goes. You might lose five pounds here, go on a diet, and you gain back set 10 pounds. You know what I'm talking about. What is the reason for it? It's an idea. It's a mental equivalent. What we need to do is rather than work to get somewhere, we need to accept ourselves as being there now and then live that way. We need to be in recovery from being overweight. We need to see ourselves as already whole, complete, and at that right, perfect weight, and looking good. Now, let's talk about anything you want to do. Let's say your career, your love life. I know a woman came to me once and was looking for the right and perfect partner. But the problem that she had was that she was limiting who her right and perfect partner would be. Because she wanted, let's say his name was Jim, because it really was Jim, but I won't tell any more. And so I tried to explain to her that when you're treating for a, for anything specifically, in this case, for the right and perfect marriage partner or life partner, you should not be outlining. You should not say who it is. Now you want to be very specific with regards to qualities, you know, handsome, uh, good job, well, you know, the same type of interests, things that are important to you. These are, these are qualities, but outlining what that person or who that person is? No, 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 no. Now, why? Because it limits your good. It limits what God can do for you. So she wouldn't listen. She wanted Jim. And guess what? She got Jim. Now, you know, sometimes the things we pray for, we really would have been better not to get. And I think in some cases, people find out too late that they should not have outlined, should have rather specified the qualities, but not told the law, not told God how to make that happen how to make that work out. We make big mistakes when we do that. So what's limiting you today? What thought in your mind is preventing you from living the life that you say you want to live? Now, some of us don't have all the education that we think we should have to be fully accepted by those people. Well, you know what? The only ones that care about those people are those people. <laughs> All you need to do is do the best you can with what you've got. And if there's something that you need to learn to get to where you want to be, sign up for a class, learn it. You don't necessarily have to have a degree to do what it is you want to do. That is to say, necessarily. However, if you do want to become a physician or something like that, you're going to probably have to take some classes and get some licenses and this sort of thing. 
but most of us aren't going in that course. Most of us want business or education or some type of job that we really feel that we're giving back to giving back to society, giving to the community and making a difference. There's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of things we can do without going out and getting a whole lot of formal education. For example, do you know how many years of do you know how many years of formal education Dr. Ernest Holmes had? Okay, that's your question for tonight. Find out how many years, you can Google it, how many years of education, in school education, Dr. Holmes actually had, and write it in the comment section. And I'll be interested to see what the answers are. You will be surprised. You will be surprised. The point of it is, you don't have to have years of formalized education to be smart. You can teach yourself a whole lot by just listening, by reading, and by paying attention. So that's all for tonight. Um, Yoga's been paying perfect attention. And, and uh, we will see you again on Monday. Meanwhile, stay tuned on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for another wonderful talk by Reverend Dr. Maxine. Just go to cslphilly.org cslphilly.org 10 30 in the morning click on the live stream and there she'll be and uh, there's also an opportunity to see previous live stream talks and to see previous love notes that both she and i have given over these past many months know you're appreciated know you're loved good night now